Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for June 21st, 2022, 6.30 p.m. here at the Shelter House. Audience, council members, and administrators. Uh, Ms. Burner, if you would call roll, please. Yep, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Vaughn. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Andrew Wright. Dear God, thank you for the day. Thank you for all those gathered here. I think it was our illustrious vice mayor that said that growing older isn't for wimps and neither is public service or being in a community where you have to talk it through and discuss and wonder. We thank you for all who come for the betterment of their neighbors and betterment of this world. Please, God, guide the decisions of uh, this body and uh, keep us at peace. Thank you for yourself. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Bless us and keep us well this day and for always. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You need to take your flags. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on, we'll need action on the uh, regular circuit council meeting for June 6, 2022. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. That'll work. Any discussion, council? And when you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right, Councilman Baum. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. And it's accepted 7 0. All right, and then moving on to city manager's report. Mr. Kitko will be filling in for Mr. Bridge tonight. Uh, thank you for that, sir. Yep. Well, thank you, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off the uh, city manager's report with the uh, police report presented by Deputy Major Sack. Thank you. Thank you, council. Thank you, members of the public administration. Uh, the uh, sheriff's office patrolled 5,452 miles uh, in May. We had taken 195 calls. We generated 47 reports, 22 assists. We had 23 criminal arrests, five felony arrests. We had three misdemeanor arrests. And we uh, served 15 warrants. We had 57 traffic stops, with 35 of those being warnings, 22 were citations, and we've done 733 business checks. There were two code enforcement follow-ups, and we investigated nine traffic crashes. And that was for the month of May. Right, thank you, sir. Any uh, questions? Council for the deputy? Yes, sir. sir. Evening, uh, Deputy Major Sack. Sir. Uh, any uh, ideas or reasoning why so many criminal arrests now? Is it the heat, summer, people getting out? I, I'm, I'm going to attribute it to that because we have been extremely busy since the weather's, the rain stopped and the weather's broke. And yep, they just start coming out and having a good time and sometimes a little bit more so than they should. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions, Council? All right. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate the report. <laughs> thank you, Deputy. Uh, moving on, what we'll do is we'll bypass. I know the Chief said he's on his way from a run, so we'll uh, move on to the finance report presented by Ms. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Kitko, Council, members of the public. This is for our May financials. And for the month of May, we collected $683,488.33. Our expenditures for the month of May are $516,345.12. We 
So year to date, we've received $3,937,190.31, and we have expended $3,136,889.77. Our beginning balance at the beginning of the year, cash statement is $6,014,278.47, and to date, our ending balance right now is $5,840,142.78. The bank report is all reconciled and showing. Then the next one is the tax, income tax collection from our tax department, Vicki Taylor Witt. The month of May, we have collected $228,536, which is now, um, <coughs> for a year to date, 14.5% uh, above what we collected last year. And I believe I've already passed out some interest. Our interest is going up in the updated council, but if there's any other questions on the finance report, I'd be happy to entertain. Got some questions from the Yes. The uh, rampant inflation that we're experiencing, is that causing much of an issue for the city? It's not showing right now, no. Our, our revenue is a little bit higher than projected for this type of uh, time of the year. Next month when I give my June financials, I'll give you a percentage of where we are of what we've collected. Um, everything else that we're seeing, local government, our taxes, everything's about the same. Expenditures? The expenditures, um, we're keeping in check on the month to month. We are under um, for the total for the year. So we are, we are doing really good. We're less than our budgeted amount to date. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? All right, thank you. We accept the finance report. Second. <coughs> you get that, Ms. Byrne? Uh, first, Ms. Eggleston, Eggleston, second, Bond. Yes. Okay. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Finance report accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Pitko. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Um, I'll go ahead and go and give the chief a minute to settle in uh, so he can give his report. Uh, we'll start off with the Public Works Department. As you know, uh, we can still call in for potholes. Uh, we are still repairing those as we see them or get um, uh, calls in. We still do have uh, three water main break holes. I think Brookfield, Fenwick, and another place to get repaired early next week. Uh, on my report, ADA, we were still waiting some materials. As you had seen, ADA parking spots here at the Smith Shelter House have been completed. I did meet with a sweeping contractor for this uh, Spring Street sweeping, he has still uh, not gotten back, the, or has not gotten the proposal back to me. So I'll uh, follow back up with him. Uh, next week, uh, just scheduled today uh, for tennis courts, they'll be cleaned, and that'll be done with a low pressure chemical wash. Um, again, it said couple of weeks, but we finalized it today to be next week. In the water department, we have started our uh, private well locations, and um, with the help of Colleen, uh, Ray in our utility department. She's really helped out with getting us the list using ODNR's uh, well uh, site and uh, start looking at the private wells we have in town, uh, inspect each of those, make sure that they're not connected to the house. You know, they can still keep them for irrigation, things like that. There's no problem with that. We just can't have any kind of hazards around them because anything goes down that wellhead, it, it'll contaminate the aquifer. So we'll be doing that. Uh, final restoration of the old water, wa Adams Water Tower site has begun. They put the first layer of um, topsoil in, and um, I had missed a call, as a matter of fact, just a little bit ago from professional property maintenance. He'll be doing finishing up the work, and I'm going to guess a lot of it is there's just no rain in sight to finish putting, uh, getting seed down. Uh, there's really no updates on the sewer department, um, but under road projects, we have uh, submitted for a CDBG grant application for Fenwick Drive reconstruction phase two, which is the 300 block. Construction cost estimate is to be about $453,000, with the city share to be an estimated 60,000. There's a potential for that to go up or down, you know, due to you know possible inflation or whatever might happen next year because uh, it'll be uh, funds that will be available for spring of 23. And then um, for regular CDBG, get to my next page. 
the Carlisle Park Phase 1 upgrade project of the basketball courts. I haven't heard the final, but I do believe uh, we were a good shot at getting um, that the monies for that, for the court to be rebuilt, uh, eight, some ADA access and a uh, swing, and then uh, some concrete work. With the uh, estimated cost being about 80000 and the city share to be twenty, but I believe that twenty is going to go down, um, at least as of the official 10% share. You know, the, the price could go up no matter what, what we want. And then under Nature Works Grant, I did apply for a Nature Works Grant to redo the concrete area where the handball area was close to the parking lot, replace that concrete pad, and add three open shelters. And these are tight, uh, um, actual commercial type gazebos that will be anchored down, have metal roofs, the whole nine yards, so we can add more uh, shelter area uh, to the pool. And then, um, not on my report, but I wanted to add it, was the community cleanup is uh, Saturday, July 16th. It's scheduled to be after the um, community-wide garage sale. And that is uh, July 16th, 8 a.m. until 11 a.m. or when dumpsters are full. That is at the old former Westlake Elementary location, 621 Walsh Drive. Uh, we do not accept bag trash, gas-powered equipment, lawn mowers, weed eaters, et cetera, batteries, electronics, well, i.e. like computers and items like that. It seems like a lot, but the Clark County Solid Waste District uh, over there on East Main, or I'm sorry, West Main, they pretty much take this stuff on a regular basis. It might be electronics on Tuesdays for a super, super low amount. I believe it's like a dollar, a couple dollars or something like that. So um, paint can be thrown in the trash as long as the lid's taken off of it and it's dried, you, we, can, we can dispose of that. Uh, we will not be accepting appliances. Uh, there's enough metal gatherers out there that pretty much it's gone as soon as someone puts it out. Uh, no hazardous waste, pesticides, oil-based, stuff like that. Uh, we do not do lemon brush pickup there because we offer it on a monthly basis. Um, we will be accepting items that contain mercury, so if you have old switches, uh, thermometers, anything like that, please double bag that and then we'll take that and uh, send it over to the health department or the combined health district. And I believe that is all I have for my report. I can entertain any questions on those or any other items you can think of. So any questions from Mr. Pickett and Ms. Eggleston? Um, when are we scheduling the new tornado siren from the south end of town? Um, that is uh, further here and um, under discussion topics for the information items. Okay. So we'll probably just bring it up then. OK. The, uh, I don't remember the name of the park. Uh, it's over there behind the uh, post office in the curve. Carlisle. Carlisle, okay, thank you. Uh, are we going to do anything with the basketball court over there? Because last time I was there, or is this the one you're talking That's about? That's the one I'm talking about. Okay. That's the one I we got. You're talking about this one down here. Oh, no, no. Uh, this one we already had done work okay. with, but yeah, that's the one in Carlisle. We'll take the old metal. Uh, part out all that concrete out and we're going to move it to get away from those power lines that go over it and make some adjustments there with some uh, benches and other things okay thank you yep is there anyone else all right thank you thank you sir um with the fire chief here uh, the his uh fire report the chief trustee first of all excuse my tardiest tardiness tonight i'm working <laughs> off of the uh, 10th run for the day um City of New Carlisle, the month of May, New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 90 EMS calls in the city, seven in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to four fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. Uh, we had two calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township or Belton Park due to Medic 52 being on a response. <clears throat> Excuse me. We answered two mutual aid calls for Pike Township and two mutual aid calls for uh, Bethel Park. Uh, we fired two new members for the division, one a fire, uh, firefighter paramedic who is also purchasing a house in the city, uh, so he'll be right in the city, and also a firefighter EMT. Uh, not on my report, but I mean these we mentioned is it's summertime, we've had a lot of water incidents in the past month, uh, we've had three, three drownings that we've either been involved in or, or helped. Uh, the first one that we that we have was a near drowning was at the city pool. Um, I think our lifeguards need a big round of applause. Um, we are our response time from the station to the pool is less than two minutes. And when we got there, the guards already had the victim out of the water, 
on a backboard strapped in at the side of the pool, uh, rendering care before we got there. Uh, and that is amazing to be able to get be able to get that done that quick, safely and correctly, and get a patient out of the water and be on a backboard and strapped down like they did. Uh, they did a fantastic job, fantastic job. But the biggest thing I can say is right now, if you're on the water, please, please have everybody in their luck in a vest. The three groundings that we had this already this summer, if the people would have been in, in the flotation device vest, there would not have been a problem. So anyway, right now it's still early. It's still real early in the summer. And like I said, today we just finished up with call number 10 for the day. Any other last questions? Any answer for anybody? <clears throat> Chief, I know what you mean, but you just clarify three groundings, but not if the new fell out. Oh, oh no, no. Uh, the one at the pool. Just for the record. Uh, for the record, the, the, the victim at the pool was fine, was transported for observation only, and was released later that day. Other questions for Chief? Right. Thank you very much, Chief. Back to you, Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Chief. Uh, moving on to informational items, uh, there was some he, some listed as discussion topics for the BZA Board of Zoning Appeals case, uh, the, the July 5th, 2022 council meeting. Um, city sign audits, I know we had uh, driven around and looked at the signs and the areas around them, and it is stated here working on a detailed report for city council, so I know he's uh, working on that because we already went and did an inspection on those. And then moving on to um, tornado sirens. Um, I had told Randy that there was some questions about uh, the tornado siren and where it might go. And I had uh, pulled up the old data from when we had the first two put in and I, I attached that in your packet with my report, which shows you the decibel readings of where our two um, sirens currently uh, project to. So, you know, basically the whole city, except for the cemetery, is covered in our 80 decibel. And then the green gets out into um, most of uh, Miami, almost to Palmer, and then the 60 decibel prevailing winds uh, could adjust this to a 60 decibel, almost to South Palmer Road to the west. And then to the east, um, you're, you're getting pretty far out there. The sounds uh, carries pretty far. So I know there's been some questions on where why, that type of thing. But I also brought up a suggestion about weather radios, because I've been dealing with tornado sirens since we put the first one in 2011. Some people getting rid of them, some people doing a different way. Um, but currently we have full city coverage with the two we got. And something I had suggested to Mr. Bridge was weather radios. Uh, weather radios are darn near 100% um, uh, they don't go, uh, they won't fail you unless obviously you don't charge the battery or whatever. But basically Wilmington's in a bunker. So they, they're able to broadcast almost at any, any storm no matter how bad it is. So a thought was just to bring up to council was, you know, look at a good weather radio. And if people would like to get a weather radio in their house, whether it's a funding thing or don't know much about it or whatever, that that could potentially be an option outside of installing a possible another tornado siren that will duplicate almost maybe 75% 75, 75 of the uh, city residents that we have coverage for now. So that was my piece on that and I can, we can discuss from here. Council. I have a big question was the timing. I'm, I'm getting filled in a little bit about it, um, but from what I understand that there is a, a radio transmission package that is available on our current sirens that now will have, soon will have Wilmington actually launch the sirens. From what I understand, is that right, Chief? Yes, uh, PNR Communications will be coming out to give us a full, a full quote on the system of having um, our sirens put on Wilmington for them to set them off. Uh, that's what everybody else in the counties are how they are set up. Uh, then we will also have a redundant backup system of uh, two portable VHF radios that I will control that I can set them off from that. Plus, we'll also have a dead man panic switch in the firehouse that can also set them off. So, is there a way you can I'm currently the way it's set up? Can you set them off now? I can't. I can have dispatch set them off. Okay. 
So, but there's not a button in the no, city. No, there's not a button. That, that button went away when they quit using the uh, sirens that were on top of the uh, water tower and that type of thing. So there perfect. used to be one in, there used to be years ago, one in the city hall and one in the fire station. And um, that was the one that were up on the, like the water tower and that type of thing. Um, but when that went away, that went away. Um, with the new sirens in 11 and the new sirens that were bought on the grant in 13. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Ball? So how are they currently set off? Uh, city of, uh, or Clark County Dispatch. Clark County Dispatch sets them off for us now. Um, for them to set them off, they have to go to a separate radio that's in the dispatch center, turn that radio on and flip it, uh, and set them off. Um, they, at this time right now, they have been doing our monthly tests. After we switch over to the new system, I will be responsible for doing our monthly tests. Uh, one other question. So a third siren, what's the cost approximately? They were running usually about 20,000. But I think we put in 25,000 for it. I believe I don't have the uh, budget rate in front of me. But just, I mean, just to be clarified, Mr. Kitko, you said a third one would basically just cover what we've already covered. Mm -hmm. if, if you're going to put it to where it's going to cover citizens, because the only place that is corporate limits is the cemetery south, and most of them, you know, we only during working hours we have two, the rest aren't going to hear it. So um, to, to purchase it with, with the city funds, to, for the citizens, you know, we're already projecting out into the county. Yeah. So to put it, we would be just overlaying our current ones. It's right. tested on. I'm sorry. Nope. It's tested on the first Monday, right, of every month. First Monday of every month. 10 a.m. Gotcha. All right. Um, living on South Main, I can tell you that I mean, stand outside and that siren is not heard. I hear it in my city building office because I'm listening for it. I'll call the chief, window shut, and I do hear it every time. Oh. That's why I was asking today because I want to go listen for it when it happens again out that direction. So We do because we, we have had a failure. We've had two failures on test and then had a federal signal come in and do the repairs because of that. So that's how we know if they're, they're um, not. No, working. I'm not doubting. I just oh, no, no, but that's it, typically how we know. Yeah. First Monday of uh, next month. But Monday. Monday. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, it happens every Monday regardless of the holiday. Regardless of the holiday, we'll still do it? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, there you okay. go. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, the only time it changes is bad weather yeah, or, or, yeah, yeah, exactly, or a malfunction. It goes out at the same time that the, uh, or right at the same, about the same time that the hyperreach, uh, if you're on the hyperreach phone signal, uh, it goes out about the same time the hyper hyperreach phone signal goes out. Okay. Because it's sent out by the same, by the uh, Clark County Dispatch. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Sure. Uh, with everybody having a cell phone now, I know my cell phone go, went off when the, we had the tornado the other day and everybody's cell phone in the room went off, even, even if it was silent. It, it still overrode the settings of the thing. So to spend 25000 I think was the figure you said, or maybe more, maybe less, I don't think it would be nece necessary to do that because everybody and their brother has a cell phone now. And they, they can get those warnings wherever they're at in the country. That The cell phone location thing on will give you that, that, uh, that warning wherever you're at. It changes automatically. There's nothing we have to do or you would have to do on a cell phone. So I just don't, uh, if, if you're thinking about that, I, I would not, uh, I would not be in favor of that at this moment. Let's, you come up with something that changes my mind. Because it looks like, according to what the map I'm looking at, we have good coverage. Uh, I know uh, uh, Councilman Eggleston said she doesn't hear it. That's the only thing I can hear inside of my house is that siren at Monday morning, first of the month, at 10 a.m., I think it is, it goes off. Mm -hmm. It used to be 
it used to be the church bells I'd hear at noon, but I don't hear them anymore. But at 10 a.m., that thing goes off every first of every Monday, regardless. And I think the, the key is they are outdoor warning systems, 100% outdoor. It's your last chance for outdoor. Because um, by the time you probably got your cell phone thing uh, coming, and if you have a weather radio, you have that, you're probably in the basement. You're not going to hear it anyway. So baseball field, pool, places like that, they, you know, you're outside gardening or something, that's what it's there for. I, I do think a little bit goes towards, um, I think most people do have cell phones. But if there's a chance to maybe help out with weather radios, which, you know, it was like six, eight months ago when I last looked at them, mm -hmm. to put weather radios in the hands that maybe people don't understand or would like to get something like that, that's, that's a, an opportunity there. How much, are, how much is those radios at that time? They're, they're, uh, roughly? I want to say anywhere between $25, $35. They're, they're not too expensive because it is a weather band period. It is right. just NOAA that broadcasts on them. And, and one other question on these tornado sirens. The last time we had the warning, uh, ours didn't go off for some reason. Why? What was the problem with that? Somebody didn't set it up or from the last storm, function? I don't know the details from the last storm. I don't I don't know what all was involved with that. So you may have to wait till Mr. Bridge comes back. I know they time. eventually got set it off. Uh, <coughs> yes, I think it was set manually, I believe. I mean, I, I'm not sure, but I think that's what happened. But uh, I, I, I'm assuming that was addressed on multiple levels. From what I understand, it is being addressed. It's already being addressed, and to be quite honest, New Carolina was not the only one in the county affected by that. Right, and that, and I would say that would because of that, it fell back on the on the county because they're the ones that's tripping our sirens. It's still being looked at, investigated. Okay. I don't know. All, I have. There's going to be a meeting with all the uh, elected officials of the area, and that has not happened yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. How many households do we have in Carlisle? I know. I know. What it's I'm about talking. twenty. About twenty-two hundred. We go by water counts, so we're about twenty-two hundred water counts. Good, Mr. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, back to you, Mr. Kitko. Thank you. Uh, moving on to. Question, if, you, if you don't mind, sir. And still on the tornado sirens. If the new developments occur, will these sirens cover those developments? They're in. Current ones we have right now? They're inside. All of them are inside. Almost all of them are inside the yellow. Uh, the one would be an edge of uh, just outside the yellow green. And then. The other part, like would be up north, Twin Creeks, would be between yellow and green. So everything would be in the green, okay. at least the green. Okay. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm done, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. We good to move on? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, gas and electric rates. Um, I'm going to try and wing this. I apologize. Uh, but in your packet, there was a pa um, flyer from IGS Energy. Um, Obviously, just by the couple pages, everything is going up. And I do know that there are, they are looking at price increases and they're looking at aggregation. Uh, I think we're currently in one. And then on his notes, he's working on getting an additional quote. I don't know if that is from another company or to get IGS to come back with, with something else. Um, do you have any questions about the uh, electrical and natural gas update? That is strictly for city properties, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, um, moving on for the Tax Incentive Review Council met on June 7th, 2022. Uh, both RD Holder and Fab Metals uh, are in compliance with the terms of their, their agreement. So it's good those that they always get checked up on for, for those. Upcoming legislation for council review and approval, uh, employee generally section code update, social media policy, indigent burial policy, burials policy, golf carts as vehicles, and community garden code update. And it looks that, like that's all I have, and I can answer any more questions on myself or with staff or anything on before we move. Any questions, council? I have one. This. Uh, IPS, this would be a substantial savings if we did nothing. 
honestly, I, I, I apologize to you. I will not give you any kind of mis. I, I, I don't know. Um, I haven't had a chance to just breeze, you know, go through this and get like a basic information on it. I, I have not. Mr. Bridge, yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Kitko, the service director and the current city manager. You did an excellent job. <laughs> Trying. All right, moving on. Two comments from members of the public. Any questions or comments, please go to the podium, name and address, and please try to keep it to five minutes, please. All righty, moving on. Uh, committee reports. Uh, let's see. First, we'll go to Parks and Rec. I wasn't prepared for this, so I apologize. Um, I believe we have everything in order that we need to have in order for the fireworks this weekend. Um, Mr. Kitko, I do need to get with you about the barricades. Um, it's my understanding that like you guys put them kind of in the general vicinity of where they need to go and then we yeah, we'll be getting uh, uh, barricades, barrels, cones, or whatever was there before. I'm going to get with a uh, couple employees that uh, set it up last year. Okay. And uh, we'll get with the fire chief. You'll want to get with the fire chief just due to dry weather and what the permit has in it on, you know, what their statute might be for um, maybe laying a wet area down. But we'll be mowing that area like we do in previous years um, back there this week as well. Okay. He said they'll set them up the same way they've done in the years past. It was my understanding that last, I didn't help set them up last year, so I'm out of the loop. But it was my understanding that, um, like, the barricades are set up and then they, like, wrap caution tape around them so that people can't just pull them apart and move them. We'll be there. Oh. Just, just no. put them where you did last year. We'll... Okay. Okay. And then um, do we have an update on the, whether or not we did actually obtain two additional porta potties? You guys voted on that at the last meeting? Yeah, it'd probably be a Randy question. No. Yeah. Mr. Bridge and I talked about that with the three that we've got, the four that are up near that end. We thought that that would be enough to supply due to the fact that we only had in the past two down in the ballpark and three up in the parking lot. So. We're good on Primarily, on right now, it looks like the four are going to be enough that are there. So, um, I did speak with IGA um, yesterday, actually, and we are going to use their kind of little access road that's over there. Um, that's where we're going to stage our food trucks. So, um, we'll need a couple of additional barricades that we can put out there. Probably, they, the IGA said their last vendor comes in on Saturday morning by 11, so we can't block anything off before then um, because that's how they get to the back of the store to make their deliveries. Um, so more to come on that. And then um, I will be sending out some information to um, council pursuant to our bylaws um, for the removal of a member. Any, go ahead. You're going to need trash cans in the IJ parking lot. Okay. And then you're going to have to need to coordinate a, a Sunday cleanup. Yeah, we, we're aware that we'll have to come back out on Sunday and pick up trash and empty and do all you that. You can empty it in, in, the, in, the, in the ballpark dumpster, it'll be emptied. Okay. So, but we have, we have 12 trash cans on our park but you're gonna need some up by, by. Yeah, we wanted to get some extra ones to put up there, like by where the food trucks are gonna be, because obviously that's where people are gonna be eating. Um, we didn't want people just throwing stuff down and littering all over IGA. A couple either. additional trash cans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have, I have the bags, Howie, if you have the cans. I got plenty of 55. I'll take a look and see what the guys got out there. We've got some too, if you need them, Howie. What time are the food trucks going to be okay. arriving? So, if you just let, I mean, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to send out a finalized um, 
like last contact email with them tomorrow. We were kind of planning to have everybody there, um, except for one. They have a they have an event prior to. They actually have events all day, um, so they're going to be a little bit later. But we're kind of planning to have them there to start setting up between six and seven. They've all gotten the form, the inspection form, um, and so far everybody's like, yeah, we don't. Most of them are like, we don't have any it of this stuff, be, so it's not a problem. It's it's a pretty common now form, so it should be a no-brainer. Yeah. And I think everybody that we've gotten, um, they participate in events right. all over, so it's not anything they're not used to. Sounds good. Have you spoke with the Hensleys for the property back here just to double check, or I can get a hold of uh, Mark tomorrow, Mark or Tom or... No, I didn't know we were supposed to. Tim or one of them. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get a hold of... Uh, yeah, I'll either text them tonight or I'll, I'll shoot him a message in the morning just to double check. I had one question just kind of popped up uh, today for both of you. Is there any concern with uh, the weather being so warm and any stuff being dry? Fireworks? Uh, like I said, once they get it, once they mow it down that afternoon, we'll probably go back there with an engine. And I've already secured a tanker and brush rig from Bumper Park okay. for, for the event. Uh, we'll probably take our engine also though back there and um, soak everything down as best we can. But with this, uh, I was just looking at the weather. Saturday, uh, 89 degrees, mostly cloudy. Uh, rain beginning at, at night. I don't know when at night, but um, and Sunday doesn't look any better. Um, but we'll wet the area down and you know do the best we can. And we'll have a brush truck engine and a uh, um, tanker standing by for, for the event. So. Okay. There could be a possibility that we may just go back and run it down instead of mowing it and, and, and killing some of it so it don't dry out. So if it's green, green, we may just run it over and get it to lay. And then if he wets it down, that's better than us cutting. Even if it was two weeks ago, we haven't had the rain to make anything grow. So yeah, we're supposed to, I think we're also supposed to get rain to, uh, tomorrow. Okay. So. Last thing that she just reminded me of, uh, Ms. Harris, I need to get with you to figure out, um, Mr. Bridge said it was very simple, um, but we need to have our DJ set up as a vendor with the city so that we can pay him. So. Just call me or email me and I'll tell you. Okay, perfect. Anything else for me? Flower looks good, thank you. Thank you. For everything. And then um, to the um, charter review, they're not here tonight. I know they wanted to set up a meeting with us last time um, they were here. Uh, I don't know if council has any feedback on the work that they presented to council or, or emailed out to us. So um, I don't know if maybe um, council wants to, if you have any changes or things that you would like to see removed, added, changed, altered, whatever it may be, to maybe get with one of the Charter Review Committee members and uh, talk with them and, and uh, get to one of the meetings. So, any questions on that? Because I believe it's got to be to the uh, to the Board of Elections by August. I've got it in my, I think it's August that has to be there. Mid-August, mid I have it on the ballot, so we still have a little bit of time, so keep that in the back of your head. All right, moving on to resolutions, done, ordinances. Ms. Bernard, if you would, please. Yep. We have ordinance 2022-21 introduced on June 6th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 2021-36 that established a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor court. Council? So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Roadwell. So an explanation of this ordinance is uh, they had an additional meeting um, with the police administrator and deputy sheriffs. And I guess on some of the sections they needed a uh, basically a subsection or an additional detail, which is in your packet it's highlighted in yellow of the additional ones in this ordinance is to amend in a, the original ordinance to add those. Thank you, Council. Any questions, comments? When you're ready. All right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. 
Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. That's accepted 7 0. We have Ordinance 2022 22 introduced on June 6th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 for an expanded traffic study. Council. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor made a motion. Okay. All right, an explanation of this ordinance is we already had a traffic study going that would in, it would have included Addison, New Carlisle, and Northern 235. This one expands that because of a possible other development to hit the uh, North Main Street Lake Avenue intersections, North Main Street and Jefferson Street where we had the traffic signal upgrades. Um, study additional potential housing developments. Uh, study will consist of the four total future developments, uh, turning movement counts um, upon uh, other things like specific times of days and things like that. So just because this went over the $20,000 spending limit for the city manager, it was brought before council. Uh, Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, any other? Psychic, aren't you? Mr. Cook and Mr. Nice. Oh, yeah, I have a question from a citizen. She called and wanted to know whether this study was basically designed in regards to the Miami County annexation. I explained to her that I thought it covered all four mm -hmm. of the projects. Am I correct on that? Yeah, under the uh, second page, it says uh, the study will consist of four total future developments. Yeah, sure. All right, anyone else? Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2022 23 introduced on June 6th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-44. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Ms. Eggleston. And an explanation of this ordinance, I'm going to pass this down to Ms. Harris. Thank you. <laughs> Under the uh, general fund, there's a little bit of increase that we're requesting in the uh, for our preparations. Excuse me, Ms. Harris, can you speak a little louder, please? I can't hear you because of the air conditioner. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Not turn it off. The uh, first part is some additional funds in the general for the general fund for um, additional communications expense. It was just budgeted a little bit low, and that's five thousand. Twenty-five thousand is for grounds maintenance. The uh, city manager is getting a quote for all the tree trimming and it was um, it's lower than that but we we wanted to put a little extra in so it's ongoing maintenance for the grounds for the city area wide the, um, the additional maintenance of facilities between what the general fund and the mayor's court is for um, additional expenditures to get the building up with um, more cameras, there have been um, ADA compliance in the restrooms, there was um, new lighting fixtures being put in and it was getting getting more than what we estimated when we do our budget a year ago. Then going down into the American Rescue Fund, that's just uh, transferring the money that we have in there to go over for the secondary clarifier for the wastewater tour, that's just a booking entry. Um, Howie, I'm going to give you the rest for the State Highway Water and Sewer. So for the state highway, the maintenance of curbs and ramps, uh, we're putting 75000 in there after I had my meeting with Burgess and Nipal to do the curbs uh, along Main Street there and um, met with ODOT on what ADA ramps I may have to do new and or bring up to code. Um, we're going to put about 75000 in there. The goal is to completely try to get all the broken curb from Madison to Jefferson, Jefferson to Washington, get that all repaired, and add ADA ramps at Madison and Maine, 
and then put any of the other ones that become a trip hazard, like at, I think, for instance, there was one at Jackson, Jackson and Maine, it was an 88 ramp that the bricks were in there, it just settled. So it's things like that. Um, I wouldn't say it's a crapshoot on the amount, but the way things keep going, um, but we put 75,000 in there to at least get us started and get most of that work done. The 50,000 we were pulling out of some of our um, ending fund balance to, we were not expecting to do a major repair by the ball fields where we had a major T for an eight and a 12 inch crack. So that alone was a $20,000 repair when you saw that big hole there just off 235. So it was quite an expensive venture. So um, we're gonna pull some of our ending fund balance back in to cover that so we can continue on with our normal maintenance. And then the wastewater fund, um, we had some uh, repairs that were unforeseen. So this will allow us to put those funds back in and do some of the general maintenance that we're gonna hopefully keep doing this year. So this will cover some of the bricks. Like the decorative area, like the bricks. On the sidewalk? On, on the ADA ramps. Okay, so. No, the, none of the decorative portion, like next to the sidewalk, this is for curbs and then ADA ramps. Okay, I misunderstood what you were saying. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I was trying to didn't hear you. Sorry. The, uh, <clears throat> Ms. Harris, uh, on the additional communication expenses, what is that for? Under that expense line, we take care of um, internet, the phone services uh, is mostly for um, that item. And that's just to hold us through the, the rest of the year, the 5,000. Okay. Just a little, it looks like it's running a little short from what I estimated in the original budget. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> and uh, you're ready, Ms. Byrne. Okay. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. That passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 20. 22 25, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on July 5th. An ordinance approving the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances and a resolution as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances providing for the adoption and publication of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinance ordinances and repealing ordinances in conflict therewith. Ordinance 2022-26 and in your packet it says 36 um, but that'll be corrected. Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 5th. An ordinance amending ordinance 19-30E regarding electric generation supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Ordinance 2022-27, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 5th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract regarding natural gas supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Ordinance 2022-28, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 5th. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2023 and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Would you like me to read the other business? Uh, please. All right, other business, we have our city fireworks display will be Saturday, June 25th, rain out date of Sunday, June 26th. We have a community garage sale Saturday, June 25th and Sunday, June 26th. This is citywide. The city offices will be closed on Monday, July 4th, 2022. And any open discussion for city related matters. Thank you. Um, I have one I wanted to go back to the service <coughs> for Kitco. Um, when you're heading out of town going by Water Dog, you know, the old train bridge, it's now the, the bike path. Mm -hmm. like that, the trees are growing up. Um, it's kind of down in the creek and are grown up covering the bridge. Who's, whose property is that or who's responsible? Um, that's our responsibility. And as a matter of fact, last, for, or this past Friday, I met with a tree company. He's going to clear out across from Water Dog, you know, coming up 235 by the pool, places where 235 is starting to overgrow. So we already have that. We're trying to work that in amongst that but we've already talked about okay. trying to get some of that back but it is ours okay yeah i was just you know because that bridge even though it's not new other than the bike path it's been there for so long it's kind of like you know it's 
part of the town, I guess. Yep. It's always nice to see it too. So you can't really see it anymore. So I don't know if you guys had plans of clearing that so you could see it visibly again. Yeah, we've pole sawed it. Some of it is um, you got to be careful getting down into the waterway when we actually do work. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get someone that uh, might be able to take some of those out and actually remove them. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Mr. Cook. For those of you that were in attendance last Saturday at the farmer's market, I want to thank Mrs. Eggleston for doing a superb job on keeping most of us council people in line and providing uh, some of the members of our citizens with donuts and pizza. Also, there has been some discussion about uh, council doing that again for the Christmas in July, which is the 16th. Yes. Even so I kind of wanted to see what council thought about that. It's an evening this is an evening event for the farmer's market. Any feedback, council? I'll be out of town. So. I'll be up there. So. Um, we had a baseball tournament. How did the uh, how did the the pizza go as far as because I wasn't it was here. gone right I'm, so there was no issues of keeping it on hand or worn no. gone it, it was long. gone all right <laughs> donuts were gone okay good what time is the uh, Christmas in July uh, farmers market thing? do you know six I can tell you, I think we're shutting it down around 2, 3 to get prepared, I think, right? Until 9. So I'm going to say it's somewhere in there unless someone knows. 6 to 9? I, I think it's something like 6 to 9. 5 or 6 to 9. Something. And we'll have it closed down prior to that. <clears throat> yeah. There'll be more information coming, I assume. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Anything else? All right. Mr. So Mayor. Sir. The, uh, <clears throat> we tabled a uh, any last meeting mm -hmm. so before i make a motion to untable that is there any uh, information on the finances for the fire department on the two dollar across the board raise that was supposed to have been at this meeting i re received the packet this weekend and i looked over the minutes because i wasn't at your last meeting and of course mr bridge wasn't here today but i did make a few quick bullet points so you were talking about the fire, you wanted the fire, de fire department. employees? Okay, so in the fire department's budget, we are at, um, revenue comes from the real estate taxes. So our revenue is, um, it averages about 250,000. Our budget this year, we pulled from some of the fund balance, our expenditures are estimated at 383,000. So we're already coming in short of our revenue to the fire department. I'm just giving you some stats to think about. Um, the Elizabeth Township's contract that comes into the ambulance revenue. So okay. they're separate funds. So you have to use your buckets for different things. Um, what the chief and I were talking about is we're six months into this budget. At this point, we, we normally try to always sustain only adding for unforeseen things like our supplemental was today. But we are working on our budget for next year between July and August. And we'd like to kind of check a survey and see what our money is and what our expenditures are so we could get it a little bit more back in balance. That was our discussion from some of the information that I believe that you were asking. I, again, I wasn't here, so I hope I covered some of it. Yeah, some of it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to untable that motion. And then once that's untabled, I will make a motion to withdraw or to have Ms. Eggleston, I think she seconded, to request her to remove her second. I will withdraw the motion at that time, but we have to take care of the table first. So you made a motion? I made a motion to bring it off the table, which would put it to a vote uh, on, the, on the tabling. So I need a second for the table. To untable it. Second. Okay. Uh, so it's off the table now. So, and we, I don't believe we need to vote on bringing it off the table. Do we correct or not? Comment. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, let's yes. vote on the yes. untable okay. and then you two can withdraw your motion and. Okay. The, Is that all right with you, ma'am? Yeah. Okay. 
So, uh, if, before before we do that, if you would call Mr. Cook, I'd like to see what he has to say. That's what I was getting to. <laughs> I concur with you that we need to do something as far as the money. However, in listening to our financial people, the fact that we possibly are going to have a recession coming up, and that's what I'm hearing from Washington, I'm hearing mm -hmm. from my financial well, people. Going to happen. I, I think at this time, in doing, I don't want to say this, Mr. Making Cook. an adjustment in this pay increase. Can I make a statement, Mr. Cook? What is that? What my, my, is that? my whole plan is to withdraw that motion. Okay. All right. okay. We can vote on untabling. Untabling, yes. Councilman Cook? Huh? Yes. Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. All right. I no, you may just say I'll withdraw my. I withdraw my second. Okay. And I will withdraw the motion. Okay. So the motion now is gone. However, I will note that in the future this will come back up. But I agree with Mr. Cook and probably majority of council and Ms. Harris that. Yeah, we're heading for a recession, and uh, I think it's going to happen about September, October. And uh, I've had one or two conversations with the chief. The uh, he says this is may only last for another three years. I think it'll go for another three years past that until the development gets up and running, and then we'll have more income coming in at that point to be able to give them something. Uh, I would have council keep in their minds that sometime next year, uh, depending on how the world is going or the states are going at that time, the city finances and whatnot, I would be interested in entertaining giving them at least a dollar next year. So with that, uh, that motion is gone until, until I think about it some more. <laughs> All right. Other business, uh, we do need to go to executive session tonight to discuss the employment of city, city personnel. Uh, so it's not on here, so we'll need a motion to break rules of council to do so. I move. Second. Motion by Mr. Cook, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. <coughs> Motion to break rules of council passes 7 0. And then, Mr. Mayor. Sir. May I ask why it wasn't on the agenda? Uh, because if Randy didn't have it squared away with what he needed. Okay. okay. It, it was between okay. Randy and Mr. Bridge and Jake. That's good. Thank you. They were just wait timing, basically. Okay. Thank you. Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay. All right, Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Yeah. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. And Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes 7-0. <laughs> yeah. All right, there should be no further business after we come out of executive session, and uh, we will take the Mr. Mayor, I'm going to move back into the regular session. Second. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes Mr. Mayor, zero. move to adjourn. Second. You guys aren't in a hurry, are you? <laughs> Who was the second? I, heard I don't know. I heard a bunch of different ones. Okay. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. All right. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman yes. Lindsay? Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? No. <laughs> Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. That passes 6-1. <laughs>